Okay, let's see if we got that right. Today we are going live because I missed the Tuesday live because I was doing a keynote and a workshop. Let me go live here on Instagram. We love our Instagram people. Let's go live on Instagram. I can't find my TikTok phone. I don't know where the heck it's at. Anyways, so we're going live today uh, and we're going to talk about a really, really important subject for you watching me right now. So let me go ahead and get comments back up here. All right. So today we're going to go over how your tone can influence your prospect to want to open up, to want to engage if you know how to use your tone the right way. On the flip side, if you don't understand how your tone is coming across and how it sounds, it can also trigger your prospects to go into what's called fight or flight mode and either one, try to get rid of you or two, stay surface level with you and go through your whole process. And then at the end, tell you, I want to think it over. I want to do more research. I'm not ready to buy now. I need to keep looking around. So we're going to talk about how your tone can influence. And I'm going to show you the three types of tone that you want to use in different parts of your sales conversations with different questions that will cause your prospects to want to open up and want to engage. Very important what I'm going to cover with you today. And it's just, it's just really the tip of the iceberg of what you'll need to learn about that. If you want to sell two, three, five times what you are right now, I don't care if you already make two or 300 grand a year in commissions. I'm dead serious when I say this to you. Okay. All right. Now, we are going live in about six different platforms. So we're going live here on StreamYard. We're going live here in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. Welcome all of you. There's about 54,000 of you running that, almost 55,000 of you running that. We just started the Facebook group about a little over a year ago. It's grown fast. We're going live on our LinkedIn channel. Our YouTube channel got verified on YouTube just a while ago. Live in our Facebook business page, almost 90,000 of you. That thing's grown fast. And we're going live on my Facebook. Hello, friends and family. We're also going live here on the Instagram phone. I love you guys on Instagram here, 318,000 followers, and we just got on Instagram. I did not even have an Instagram account until October of 2021. I never got on Instagram before, and now we started doing a few reels on there, and there's 318,000 of you. We love you guys too, okay? I need life insurance training. Well, we train tens of thousands in your space, John. Just message me directly. We train salespeople in the industry that make 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 grand every single month that when they started in our virtual training courses for our clients, we're pretty much dead broke. So, John, just message me directly if you want to get into our industry specific training for your industry so you don't keep getting pounded in your face. You just got to learn the right skills. All right. Now, if you are brand new to the Facebook group or YouTube, you just started me following me there or LinkedIn or the business page, or even IG here, okay? I'm Jeremy Miner. I'm not that cool. I just wear Hugo Boss t-shirts. Just this is the name of the game over here. I'm the founder of 7th Level. Now, we're a sales training organization, if you don't know that, that trains salespeople exactly like you, okay? So we train sales professionals like you, sales executives like you, sales management like you, sales leadership like you. Coaches, consultants, business owners, entrepreneurs, companies like you. And we train you and your teams how to transform the way you sell by using specific skilled questions and techniques that cause your prospects to pull you in and sell themselves rather than you trying to push them forward. It doesn't work that well. And it's not good. It's not going to get any better for you. I hate to tell you, as the recession will start happening, probably the next six to twelve months, like everybody's talking about, your laydown sales are going to become few and far between. And the more you push, the more your prospects are going to push back. And the harder it is, every every weakness in your sales process that you have now during a recession, when your prospects hold on to their money tighter because they have uncertainty with what's going to happen, the more your sales process will be magnified times 10 as far as the weaknesses in it. You're going to struggle, I can assure you. I went through the 2008, 2009, 2010 debacle. I saw so many salespeople in my industry quit, get fired, and I was making millions of dollars a year in commissions. The only difference, I knew techniques that work with human behavior, whereas they were still using 
consultative selling techniques that are surface level and or traditional boiler room sales techniques that trigger sales resistance. You don't want to be in that faction unless you want to stay at the exact same income you are at right now. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about how your tone influences everything you do. It will either make sales for you or it will cause you to lose deals that our clients who are in the same exact industry as you make every single day and they are kicking your butt down the street. Not that they're any cooler. They drink water like you. They eat food. Apparently they even have trials and tribulations. They just have more of an advanced sales ability that they've acquired by learning any PQ, by being our clients in our virtual training courses and or group trainings. All right. Now, if you're on the live right now, I want each of you to do this. I want to have you go down and post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, grab your phone. I'm not going to start this training until I see hundreds of hashtag lives. I'm not going to start. I'm just not going to start. I don't know. I'm going to go golf. It's 78 degrees here today in Scottsdale. It's a really nice day to golf. So grab your phone, go post hashtag live. What industry were you in in the Great Recession, Bethany? I was selling debt relief services. Half of my industry lost their jobs. Just so you know, in that space. That year, I made 1.4 million in commissions. <laughs> you just acquire the right skills. Okay. Easy peasy. You'll be the last one to go. Okay. Company going bankrupt. You think they're going to get rid of the top salesperson? No. You'll be the last one out the door. And then there'll be a hundred other companies that want to hire you and pay you whatever you want. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I better see. Thank you, Tom, Bethany, McKaylin, Facebook user, Facebook user, Kevin. I can't see all of you guys on there. So hashtag live. If you're on the replay post hashtag replay. Now I want each of you to grab your phone and I want you to smash the heart button and I want you to smash the like button, smash the heart button, smash the like button. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts and hundreds of smash likes because with what I'm going to show you today for free, I'm not even charging you for this, can completely change your game, can put you on top. You're going to have to learn more than this. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You're not going to triple your earnings by a 20 minute live. Okay. You're just not, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some nibbles here. I'm going to give you a little hors d'oeuvre. All right. Being very generous today. Yesterday at 103 degree temperature. Today I'm down to 101.5, so I'm doing better. I'm still in here for you guys. I don't know why sometimes, but I'm here. All right. Now, you want to start acquiring skills that works human behavior. If you're a salesperson, right before I get into this training, and you're like, dude, I'm tired of making what I am right now. Let's say you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions in your industry, okay? Or you want to start making, and I'm talking about consistently every month. Like you want to start making 15 grand every single month with what you sell or 20 grand a month every single month with what you sell or 25 grand a month every single month or 30 grand or 40 grand or 50 or 60 grand plus per month every single month with what you sell. Because I can assure you we have clients in your industry that make that every single month now. They're no different than you. They just acquired more advanced sales ability from going through our virtual training courses like our clients are. That is the only difference that separates you from them. That's why they're out earning you three, four, five times to one. So if you want to have those skills, message me directly right now. If you're on IG, message me directly right now. If you're on LinkedIn or the Facebook group or my Facebook or the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. If you're on YouTube, you won't be able to message me. You, on the banner here, you can just join our free Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro, where you can message me or follow us on Instagram at Jeremy Lee Miner. Make sure you follow the right account. There's a lot of spam accounts on IG that will imitate me because we're not verified on IG yet. It's the only damn place we're not verified yet. Get verified on YouTube and Facebook in two hours. IG turns us down six times. I guess they just don't like it. Now we learn we can just pay a membership to get verified. Good Lord. So if you join IG here, just follow me at the right one. We have 318,000 followers, Jeremy Lee Miner. Okay. All right. If you can't figure out how to message me, then just post hashtag any PQ and either myself or some one of my stunt doubles, because we have like 25 of my stunt doubles in our DMs, will message you back some details uh, about training that we have for you if you want to sell more. Now, you don't have to sell more. You just keep working the same hours, making the same amount of money, just repeating the same thing over and over, hoping and praying that somehow you're magically going to double your sales. You can keep taking the hopium drug. 
kids, don't do drugs. If you want to be in the top 1% earning salespeople in industry, drugs are not good for you. Stop taking the hopium drug. Okay. Hard way to make a living. All right. So let's get into this. All right, IG, I'm going to put you guys over here so you guys can see the board behind me because I wrote some stuff here on the board for you. Okay. All right. Now let's start here. I'm going to pull this up for you guys. I even took some notes. I'm being very generous. I came in here this morning and prepared this training just for you guys. Make sure you write down what I'm about to show you. JM on YouTube says, get on with it. You're losing me. Well, JM, you can leave. Cool, uh, cool initials. I guess I'll just take more of my time. I'm giving this to you for free. If you don't want it, then just leave. You're, you're not going to hurt my feelings. See, we already have these skills. Our clients who are in your industry, they already know all this stuff. We don't have to give it to you. We're giving it to you at no cost. If you want to leave, go ahead. I still like you, but I'm just maybe I'll just slow down for you. Just make you upset. You having a bad you need a Snickers bar over there? Somebody give that that person a Snickers bar over on YouTube. He's having a hard time. Okay. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to go over today. How do you use your tone? to influence your prospects to want to open up and go below the surface. How do you do that? Now, write this down. Very important for you. Write what I'm about to say down. Your tone, your tone is how your prospects interpret the meaning behind the question you're asking. Let me repeat that again. Your tonality on every single question you ask and everything you say to them is how your prospects interpret the meaning behind the question you're asking. I'm going to repeat it a third time in a different way. Hopefully it sticks in your brain. Your tone is how your prospect interprets why you're asking the question. Does that make sense? They're either going to interpret the question as one of the following. Okay. If you don't understand how to use your tone to your advantage and to their advantage, they're going to interpret. If your tone comes across aggressive, fast, enthusiastic, ending your sentences on a high note, okay? If it comes across needy, if it comes across attached, if it comes across overly assumptive, especially in the beginning of your conversations, most of your prospects, unless they are a lay down sale, will interpret that you're asking the question to try and use their answer against them to close them. Let me repeat that. They're going to interpret your questions that you're asking, that you're trying to use their answer against them to lock them in like a logical base trap. Let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Okay. Let's say, and I'm going to give you an industry specific example. I was just working on one of these sales structures right before I got on here. If you sold solar, we trained thousands in this industry. In fact, I was just doing a keynote for 9,000 solar, pe solar people for power, uh, power solar in Carlsbad five days ago. Okay, 9,000 reps. All right. Here's a question that they're going to interpret that way. John, if I could show you a way to cut your bill in half, would you be interested? Let's say that you knock on the door, you get on there and they're like, you know, solar, I'm not really interested. Hey, if you could just give me two minutes of your time, if I could show you a way to cut your bill in half, would you be interested? See, that's an obvious question that most prospects feel if they answer the way you want them to, that you're going to do what? That you're trying to trap them into saying what you want them to say. That's obvious, right? Well, of course, I'd want to cut my bill in half. See, they're not even listening to you because they your tone is triggering them to feel like you're trying to manipulate them by that question. OK, now notice how my tone was. It was a fast tone. It was more aggressive. So it triggers your prospects to emotionally shut down. And they either try to get rid of you. OK, or they go through your sales pitch. And at the end, they say, oh, this sounds really good, but let me think it over. Let me look at it a little bit more. Let me do more research. I need to keep looking around. I'm looking at other companies. I need to talk with my spouse. I need to talk with the board more. And then it's over, right? Well, you, I know, you, yeah, you know what I'm right. You experience this every day, don't you? Be real with me. I, I was in the trenches like you for 17 years. I made a bid under 33 million in straight commissions in, seven, in my 17 year sales career as a W2 or 1099 rep. 
I know what goes on in your prospects' brains. Okay. My background's behavioral science. I do know a few things about these things. About the only thing I know. If you ask me to change the oil in my cars, I'd have no idea. No, I, I could barely change a light bulb, but I do know human behavior very well. Now, let me give you the same example, but now I'm going to tweak the question by only three words and I'm going to completely change my tone and I want you to hear the difference in how the prospect would interpret the same thing. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. I want you to watch my facial expressions, my body language, and I want you to hear my tone. And when you see the difference in the comments, say me. Are you ready? I'm going to drink some water. Hear my tone. John, if there was a way that you could, you know, lower your bill and, and lock in the rate so it wouldn't increase, would that possibly help you? If there was a way that you, now I'm going to give you the same industry specific example in solar. John, if there was a way that you could lower your bill and then lock in the rate so it wouldn't increase, would that be a possible interest to you? Let me do it again. Sally, if there was a way that we could lower your bill, and I'm not saying that we could yet. I'll have to know more details about your usage and, and kind of the rate hikes that they've been making you pay lately. But if let's say that we could lower your bill and lock in your rate, would that possibly help you? Now, what was the difference in what I just did? How do you feel the prospect interprets the second way I asked the same almost word for word question? I literally changed three words. Do you see the difference in how the prospect interprets pretty much the same question, but do you see how my tone affects how they interpret that? Who has control of how the prospect interprets your questioning? You, the salesperson does. We have to stop blaming the prospect and take personal responsibility that we are triggering them to go into fight or flight mode or once you learn what we train you with NNEPQ, you're triggering them to open up and engage. That's the difference between where you are now in your earnings compared to where you could be, period. Okay, now let's keep going. I'm going to show you a lot more differences, okay? Now, here on the board here, let's go over the three types of tones that you're going to want to master in order for you to sell far more than you are today even if you're already doing well, I don't care if you already make 250 grand a year. How are you going to go to 500 grand a year in commissions in your industry or higher by doing the same thing you are now? It's going to be pretty hard. You're going to work triple the hours. You already work eight to 10. Or are you going to work 20 to 30 hours? Well, you can't work 30 hours a day, right? Okay. So let me give you a forewarning here. I'm just, when I go do these lives or you see me on a reel, on LinkedIn or YouTube or, you know, IG or TikTok or Facebook. We are giving you little nibbles compared to what our clients go through who are in your industry, watching me here in this black shirt in our advanced NEPQ 3.0 training portals, advanced inner circle virtual platforms and group trainings we only do with our clients. They are out learning you 25 to 1, 100 to 1 compared to what you're seeing in our reels, just so you're aware. I see people that stop me at the airport all the time. Oh, I follow your reels. Oh, well, you're, you're getting about one, 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 one tenth of 1% of what our clients are who are going through all of our training programs. They are out learning you 50 to 100 times to one. That's why they're crushing your numbers and crushing your earnings. That can all change for you right now today. You just got to message me directly. That's it. That's simple. You can change everything. Now, let's go over this. There are certain questions in your sales process that require a more curious tone. Let me see if IG can see me here. Okay. There are certain questions in your sales process that are going to require a curious tone. And I'm going to show you what that means here in a second. There are other certain parts of your sales process and questions with what you sell that require a far more skeptical or challenging tone. 
Now you can't be skeptical and challenging the first two minutes of a sales conversation because you don't have much trust or credibility that soon in a conversation, right? So when are your questions supposed to be more challenging or skeptical and why? Why would you ask a question in a challenging, skeptical tone? Did you see my did you see my facial expression when I asked it that way? Did you hear my tone? See, that's a skeptical, that's a challenging tone. Now, what part of the sales process would you, God forbid, ask a challenging question to a prospect? Well, if you don't know the answer, you're losing deals you could be making right now. Let's talk about that. There's other questions in your sales process that require far more of a concern tone. A tone that shows more empathy. When do you show more empathy in your tone and why? What does it do to the prospect's mind? Well, if you don't know how to do that, you're losing tons of deals that our clients who are in your same industry make every single day, every day. I'm going to show you the differences. You're lucky I did this today. All right. Now, typically, let me break this down because I've only got about 15 minutes. Typically, your connection and situation questions require more of a curious tone. Now, that doesn't mean that you're, you can't use a concerned tone sometimes in those stages or even a challenging tone here or there. But in connection and situation questions, the first part of your sales process, it's going to be more of a curious tone. OK, now your problem awareness questions. Now, if you're not one of our clients, you probably don't even know what problem awareness questions are because we don't talk about those in the reels. We don't talk about those in any of our free training. That's all for our clients. Connection, situation, problem awareness, solution awareness, consequence questions. We don't really talk about that at all in the reels. I save that all for our clients. That's why you guys that follow me think you're, oh, I'm just following. I'm going to make all this money. Well, you just won't because you don't even know the sales process. You just know a few tips but you don't know it's before those tips, after those tips. You don't know the ins and outs. That's why you're losing deals that you could be making if you were a client. That's simple. Now your solution, so your problem awareness questions, you're getting into more of a skeptical tone, but they can also be a curious tone as well. Okay, depends on the question. Solution awareness questions, more curious, sometimes skeptical, sometimes a concerned tone. I'm gonna show you a few differences. Consequence questions are usually, you start off with more of a skeptical or challenging tone, but then you lower your voice at the end into more of a concerned tone, a tone that shows empathy. So I'm gonna show you the difference in that, okay? Now, let me give you a few examples. I'm gonna start off with giving an example of a curious tone, okay? And I wrote one on the board here. Now I'm gonna show you a generic version here. Let me see. Whoop. Okay. This is purposely generic. And then I'm, what I'm going to do for each of these, I'm going to show you generic versions. So you can try to plug in what you sell. We train 158 industries. Do you know how many industries there are in the world? There's only 158. According to Forbes, that's not me. According to Forbes, there's 158 industries in the world and there's subsets of each. Now we're in all of those at this point. We're a fairly large company. Okay. I've trained almost half a million salespeople in the last three years. So we're pretty much everywhere. Okay. Now, might even be more now. I don't know. We just trained 9,000 last week. Okay. So let me give you a generic format of a question so you can plug in your industry and then I'll give you a few industry specific. Now, once again, pay attention to how my tone comes across. Pay attention to my body language, my facial expressions. Everything I'm doing is intentional. It's not just for fun and games. It's for different psychological reasons in your prospect's mind. Okay. Now let's say that in this example, you take an inbound lead, someone who, when we say inbound lead, that's someone who's booked on a calendar. This is going to be tweaked. It'd have to be tweaked if it's an outbound lead, or especially if you're a cold calling, it wouldn't be exactly like this. This is an inbound lead. Daryl, you're good at this, man. Well, I had a few practice, had a few years of practice, Daryl. Thank you very much on YouTube. You're very kind, too kind over there. All right. Let's see how this sounds. So let's say you get on Zoom. It's an inbound lead as an example. Okay. You sit there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. The little things that you do when you get on Zoom. Then you're going to look down at like your notes, like you're thinking, and you're going to say something like this. 
Okay, so it, it looks like you had booked on the calendar about looking at uh, possible outside help with your blank so that you could blank, right? Now that's a curious tone. How did my tone come across? More curious. Now, let me specify something. Obviously, you're going to have to tweak this for your industry. You wouldn't say looking for outside help if you sold like real estate or if you sold life insurance. That wouldn't make any sense, right? Or if you sold e-commerce or cars, that wouldn't make any sense. So you'd have to tweak that, which we show you how to do that on our virtual training platforms. But the point is, is could you hear how my tone sounded curious, right? Now, let me give you an industry specific one and you're going to see how it sounds curious as well. Now, in this example that I'm going to give you down here, let's say that you sell to SMB type of companies, small, medium businesses. OK, you're in B2B sales. And let's say that you are a business consultant that comes in and helps companies with their operations and systems that help companies, newer companies, scale their business with more revenue. OK, a lot. That's a big industry. We train a lot of people in that industry as well. OK, so pay attention right here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, here's how you start. Okay, can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, good. Okay, so it looks like you had uh, booked on the calendar about looking at uh, possible outside help with like your operations, your system, so you can start scaling your company, right? What type of tone did that come across as? A more curious tone. Do you see how I'm doing that? Okay, prospect says, yeah, right. Now, second question. Let's keep going here. I'm going to fly through this a little bit faster. I'm going a little bit slow. This is your second connection question. If you sold in that industry, see how you would tailor it to what you do. Now we teach you how to do this in our virtual training platforms for our clients. All right. Then you might go now. Hey, I, so the price says, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Now I was curious. Like when you saw the ad the other day where they were talking about, you know, X, Y, Z, I guess what, what was it about uh, what you read there that I guess caused you to want to have a conversation with us? Or what was it about what you read that I guess attracted your attention? How did my tone come across? Can somebody tell me a what type of tone? Somebody message it in the comment. How did my tone come across? Now, hey, I was curious, like when you went through the ad the other day where you saw X, Y, Z, what was it about the ad that I guess attracted your attention? Now that's a curious tone see there we go that's a curious tone all right you guys are getting it right now how does my prospect interpret that that i'm curious so it causes them to open up and tell me the truth rather than keeping it guarded where their surface level do you see the difference in that no that's not a cocky tone good lord who said that that's interesting. <laughs> I love people. Human behavior is fascinating. Okay. Now, let me give you another example. Let's say you're asking situation questions now. Situation questions, if you don't know, because you, you're not our client, so you don't understand what NEPQ is, neuroemotional persuasion question. NEPQ, yes, you're interested, yes. Very good. Uh, Alexa Bohina, good, good comment there on IG. Okay. So situation questions, you're helping you and your prospect find out what the real situation is. Okay. Now, here's a generic version first. This would be my first situation question. Now, it'd have to be tweaked depending on what you sell. This is generic. Okay. Hear my tone. Uh, can you can you maybe walk me through what you guys do now for your blank just so I have more context? John, can you walk me through who you guys use now for your blank, just so I have more understanding? How did my tone come across? More of a curious tone. Do you see how that works? Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. How about this one? Let's say this is an industry. I'm going to give you an industry specific one right now. Now in this example, let's say if you sold for a marketing agency that helps companies with their lead generation, their branding. Okay hear how my tone comes across. Sally, can you walk me through what you guys do now to bring in new leads and clients? Can you walk me through what you guys do now to bring in new leads and clients? How does my tone sound? Curious tone. How does the prospect interpret that question? That I'm curious and that I would need to understand that to see if I could what? 
help them with what they're possibly looking for. That's how they interpret that because of my tone. Now, if I said, hey, uh, can you let me know, like, what do you guys do for like uh, lead generation now? Like, what do you guys do for that? It comes out differently. They might interpret that differently. But if I said, uh, maybe we could start here just so I have more context. Who do you like? How do you guys uh, bring in new leads and, and clients now just so I have a, a, a more of a firm background on that? Okay. More of a curious tone. Let's move on. Okay. Let's talk about skeptical. When do we want to get skeptical with their tone and challenging? Okay. Typically, I'm going to give you an example in this section here as a problem awareness question. Now, this is generic right here, not industry specific. Okay. Hear my tone. So this is after you found out maybe they've been with a, a, a different company for several years. Okay. Okay. So you've been with XYZ company the last three years. Do you, do you like the results you've been getting? How did my tone come across then? So you've been with XYZ company for the past five years. Do you like how things are going? What type of tone does that come across as? kind of a skeptical slash concern tone. Did you pick that up? Okay. All right. I'm in the digital marketing space. It took us two years to realize what you just said just then. There you go, Sam. Now you can keep taking decades to figure all that out. Or if you got into our training today, you would figure that out in about five minutes, plus about 10,000 other things that you're making mistakes on that are costing you deals that you would be making in our platform that our salespeople this guy, <laughs> Hendrix, you're funny. I love that. That's funny. Uh, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Anyways. Okay. See what I did there. Now, let me give you an industry specific example. This is a consequence question. Okay. Consequence question gets your prospect to challenge the way they've been thinking or question the way they're thinking that keeps holding them back in their situation. OK, typically you're going to ask consequence questions right after your solution awareness questions, right after you get them to see what their future is going to look like once their problems are solved. You rip it away with the consequence question that gets them to defend themselves on why they feel like they have to change now and change with you. Is that what you want? Do you want your prospects to like tell you why they have to change now and why they need to change with you rather than you telling them why they should? Which one do you think is going to sell you more? I think you know the answer by now. OK, so here's a generic version. Now, notice my tone. Okay, but what are the consequences if you guys don't do anything about this, though? How did my tone come across? Have you thought about the ramifications if your company keeps ignoring this? What are the consequences if you guys keep pushing down this, pushing this down the road like you have the last two years? What type of tone is that? Skeptical, tone, challenging tone. Do you see why we'd ask that? Now, consequence questions we're not asking in the first two minutes. They're later throughout the discovery process. Okay. Depending on what you sell. Okay. Now let me give you an industry specific example of this. I was just doing a big workshop for a, I think they do about 500 million a year in revenue. It's a big company in Salt Lake city called OC Tanner. And what OC Tanner does, I just got back from Utah a couple of days ago. Uh, what they do is they help uh, companies, mainly enterprise level companies, Fortune 100, 500, Fortune 1000 companies. They help them with better company culture, better awards, incentive programs, uh, which basically the problem they solve is they drastically reduce turnover rates with companies. So companies lose top employees to other companies because they're just not happy at their company. So they come in and fix all that which definitely keeps top people in those positions, saving some companies millions of dollars a year. It's a great business. And the great thing about doing that keynote with them and a workshop is they really practice what they preach. I mean, they treated me like really good. I love those guys. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully we do even more training with them. They're great. Okay. Now take, this is a consequence question for their industry. Now, here's what I want you to notice. You're going to notice I start asking this consequence question in a skeptical tone. And then at the end, I'm going to lower my voice and go into more of a concern tone. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm going to do that. Take it. Take a listen here. Okay. This is another version of spin selling. Check it out, people. Well, spin selling, because I've been through that course as well, is more logical based questions, more surface level questions. That's by Neil Rackham. He's a college professor. 
never sold anything, by the way. It came out in the late, early 80s, actually. Revolutionary for the 80s. That's consultative selling. Okay. This would be, according to our clients who've been in that program and ours, much, much more different. We're showing you how to trigger their emotional drivers, their emotional feelings, their emotional states, JM. It's deeper than spin, way deeper. Yeah, a lot of our clients would say that for sure. JM is angry. He's the guy that needs the Snickers bar. Somebody throw JM the Snickers bar. He's very angry over there on YouTube. He says, get to the point. I don't like you. Well, JM, you don't have to follow us on YouTube. You should follow the spin selling. I like spin selling. They're great over there for sure. Okay, you don't have to learn this stuff. Everybody mass this out. So Jam doesn't learn it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you, man. Jam. Well done. Well done, brother. Okay. Let's go. Okay. So what happens if you don't do anything about this and your employee engagement store scores stay the same and you keep losing top employees to XYZ competitor? What are the, what are the ramifications for you at that point? Let me do that again. Notice how I start skeptical and end concerned. Okay. What happens if you don't do anything about this? Your employee engagement scores stay the same and you keep losing your top people to XYZ company. What are the, what are the ramifications for you at that point? See how I start with a skeptical tone and roll down into a concern tone. Now, why would I roll down into a concern tone? Because when I roll down into concern tone, the prospect feels what for me? That I'm concerned for them. That I understand their unique situation. That builds what? It builds massive trust. That's where the sales made. Trust is not built by asking them how their day's going or how the weather's doing where they live. It's built by your questioning and your tonality ability that causes them to view you, that you understand their unique situation more than anyone else. That's how you build trust. That's how you become the king and or queen of selling in your industry. Here, let me get another example. Okay. Let's say, here's a, what are the ramifications for you at that point? Okay. See? Now, here's another one. Let's say if you sold solar, same thing. Look at my tone, how it changes. Skeptical to concern. What happens if you don't do anything about this and they keep raising your rates every year like they have, but now you're 75, 80, so having to pay your bill every month, but now the bill's three times more and you're on a limited income. How would you pay for it at that point? Skeptical to concern. Skeptical tone to concern tone. Do you see the difference? Do you feel the difference? I know you feel the difference. Okay. Now let's look at what a concern tone sounds and feels like here. What's really holding you back? How does that tone sound? What's really holding you back from moving forward? That's a concern tone. What's really holding you back from moving forward so that you can, and you repeat back what they said they wanted. Okay. Let me give you one more example. Then I have to get into a meeting. They're yelling at me in there. My CEO is going to get, in, get me in trouble. Problem awareness questions. Let's say if you sold life insurance, you find out they don't have any insurance. Okay. And you find out that if they die, they're going to leave their wife and kids to have to do everything. You lean in and say, do you want Cindy to have to pay for all those expenses if you if you didn't have to? What type of tone is that? That's a concern tone, like a therapist. And people trust therapists, don't they? No, not, not at all. I wouldn't. But how many months would Cindy be able to pay the house payment, all the other expenses without your income, though? Oh my gosh. I'm, well, if you really thought about it, maybe six months. So what happens to her and the kids? At that point, see how my tone is a concern tone. Now, do you see how your tone can either cause your prospect to want to open up and engage with you, to go deep with you, to be truthful with you, to trust you, to tell you what their problems are and the root cause of the problem? If you learn the right tonality skills. But on the flip side, can you see? How the tone you're using now, because you haven't learned advanced tonality yet, is also causing your prospects 
to emotionally shut down. Stay guarded. When you ask questions, they give you very vague or generalized answers, three or four would answers, or they go into fight or flight mode and they try to get rid of you. It's all in your tone. Now, do you want to change that? Whose choice is it if you change your situation or stay where you're at? It's yours, right? So if you want to change that, if you want to be like our clients who are in your industry, who are kicking your butt right now, who are making two to three to five times what you are, even if you're already making multiple six figures a year, because I can assure you we are training clients in your space that are making two to three to five times what you are, then message me directly right now. But if the client is not willing to engage, well, that's because you don't understand how to use your tone from the very beginning and you don't understand the right questions to ask. That's why they're not engaging. Oh, you're good. I like the pause too. Well, yeah. Do you want to learn how to do that? We can train you how to do all of that and about 10,000 more. 10,000, way more than that. That's just a little nibble. Or don't have to learn how to do that. And your sales say the same. So if you want to acquire those skills, you want to start making your first 10 grand, your first 15, the first 20 grand every single month with what you're doing right now. Or if you want to start making 25 or 30 or 40 grand every single month with what you're doing right now, message me directly right now. Now, either myself, unsellable prospects, is that due to our approach? Well, I think you probably know the answer. See, when I lost a deal, I never blamed the prospect. I looked at what did I not say? How did my tone come across? What did I not ask? And when I started changing that and reflecting on what I was doing wrong, my sales, well, the rest is history. So message me directly right now. Hey, excited to see you in Charlotte for Aruza Marketing's National Sales Training Conference. Yes, I'm going to see you guys in a month doing a big keynote training for you guys out there, your pest control company. Congratulations. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'll be putting that together here in about two weeks for you guys. All right, guys, I got to jump on a meeting. Message me directly right now. Join the free Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. If you're on YouTube or any of these other channels, message me directly right now, either on IG or in our Facebook group or on LinkedIn. And either myself or some of our team will message you back some details. Uh, you can even book a, a, a meeting with one of our team members. We have 26 different training programs. And it all depends on what industry you're in, what commissions you're making now compared to what you want to make. Once we know all those details and the ins and outs, we suggest which training program to be in that's going to give you the most amount of sales, the most amount of money, the quickest. Okay. Love you guys. I'm going to go. I've got a meeting. They're yelling at me in there. See you guys soon. Thanks everybody.